Uh, this is a reality of what's happening on the ground in Libya, in North Africa, in the Middle East. In the early days of the Libyan uprising, we spoke with a brave young man about the chaos in Benghazi, Mohammed Nabus. He spoke with me late at night on a day when he had watched friends die. Even then, he fretted that death could come at any moment. Tragically, it did come for him on Saturday when he was killed by a sniper's bullet. And in the last few weeks, Nabus, well, he made it his mission to tell the world about the revolt by any means necessary. And CNN's Arwa Damon is going to join us from eastern Libya with the very latest on how the brave young man met his fate. But first, part of my conversation with him. You believe that your life is in jeopardy just by making this call and talking to us now. Of course, I do. They have already shut down two of my SIM cards, of my personal SIM cards. This is not mine. This is just a random SIM card I was given to be able to speak to you. Thank you so much, and be in touch, and be safe, okay? I'm not sure I would be there tomorrow, because I'm not sure if I'm going to survive tonight, but there's going to be another group tomorrow with you, hopefully. Uh, hang I haven't, on. haven't done do, the confirmation. Do, do, do you think the situation is that bad that you believe that people won't survive overnight? It, it, is it that bad? I'm telling you my friend has died already and all 200 people died. I don't know what's going to be worse to you. Hmm. And he told me during that conversation he didn't think that he would make it to morning. Make it through to the morning. Sinan's Arwa Damon joins us now. Uh, Arwa, he did make it his mission before he died to tell what was going on. It is a sad story, but it is the reality of what's happening where you are. It tragically is, Don, and Mohammed Nabusi is one of those many people who literally risked their lives and paid the ultimate price just simply to get the news out, the real news out about what was happening in his own country. He was one of those young, bright, inspiring minds. Everybody who met him grew to respect and admire him. Here in Benghazi, he's considered to be a hero. He was 27 years old, a technology wizard who managed to rig cameras up and live stream a video out about what was happening in Libya at a time when Libya was really a black news hole for many organizations like our very own because we did not have access to proper information in the country. We did not have reporters in the country. Mohammed Dabusi was one of those many people who was our eyes and ears on the ground, risking his life as he did there to speak to you over the phone. And somehow he'd also managed to get those pictures out by bypassing whatever systems the Gaddafi regime has been trying to put into place, bypassing those firewalls just to get the message out. He was one young man out of many who passionately believed in this cause, in this battle for a free and democratic Libya. And he did end up paying the ultimate price yesterday. He was killed when Gaddafi forces entered the city of Benghazi. He was shot by a sniper, according to his wife and supporters, when he decided to go out into a neighborhood where he had heard that rocket fire had killed a number of children. He himself was an expecting father. His wife was pregnant with their first child. And Don, I'd just like to share one of his favorite quotes, and that is, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle.